Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Boys. Uh, this is episode two now and I want to talk today a bit about sailing and mental health. So um, I think for me sailing is a really good opportunity to get out of the working environment. I work in a very corporate environment. Um, I really enjoy my job but then outside of work it's really nice to be able to unwind and do something completely different you know I don't have any of my socials on any of my phone email it's just a chance for me to completely unwind um, and be at one with the boat that I'm sailing um, in my last episode I talked about how I got into sailing and what kind of motivated me to start sailing so hopefully this will expand a little bit more upon that but also go into um, sailing and mental health November uh, typically does have quite a big focus on mental health and I thought it would be quite good to just highlight some of these things. So I think firstly uh, just getting out onto the water is always going to be really refreshing, it's always going to be you know getting out of that situation, a stressful situation into nature and everybody knows that walks, you know exercise is really good for your mental health. So I think for some people, they might think, you know, you're just sat there on a boat, you're not really doing anything. But in reality, you know, a lot of the time, especially with kind of lake sailing, and when you start sailing, you would typically be on a dinghy. So it's going to be very active. You're probably going to be wearing a wetsuit with a kind of flotation device, or, you know, you might even go out kayaking. Uh, you might try windsurfing or different types of, um, you know, sailing or lake bake lake <laughs> based activities so um, just in terms of where you know you could look to do these activities you can find a lot of information about mental health and also sailing's benefits and what programs are available for young people through the Royal Yachting Association so I learned to sail um, I did it at a Debdale Outdoor Activity Centre in Manchester um, and that was just the basics, level one and level two. But I know that they've got a really excellent program for young people, for disadvantaged people, um, you know, so that they can start and learn to do something. And the really great thing, I think, especially for children, is that they're all the same. They're all wearing the same wetsuit, the same buoyancy aid, and they're all just having fun together. It doesn't matter what background they're from. Um, and I think one of the problems nowadays is that you've got a huge range of people in society where sailing is now a lot more accessible. Um, but unfortunately, you do seem to see that sailing does is driven and it does come up a lot more through sort of middle classes. Um, you know, and you see kind of it coming through families. I'm not from a sailing background myself. Um, when I did my day skipper, uh, the uh, the course instructor, uh, Bob Beggs, you know, he came from Moss Side in Manchester and yet has done skippered clip around the world. So there's no requirement for you to be from a certain background to get into sailing or even to have prerequisite knowledge from family. It can all be learned. And I think if you're passionate about being on the water, I know that this year it's been quite big for people to go out while swimming. While swimming has become huge. You know, people are, are taking up paddle boarding and especially throughout lockdown when people really struggle I think with mental health, I know I did. Um, then that's really now become something that is, it's something that people have started to look into more but also has provided more channels to get into um, the sport. So the first, recommendation I would have is to definitely contact your local RYA centre, so that would be the Royal Yachting Association Centre, and book onto a level one. Uh, typically a level one dinghy uh, course will cost £150, you know you come away with a certificate but also the basics we've been able to sail a small lake sailing dinghy. So for me getting on the boat initially um, I just knew that for me, sailing was something that I really wanted to do. Oh, can you see my little cat here? <laughs> That's so cute. I didn't actually realise she was sat right there. <laughs> um, so, 
moving on from kind of lake sailing, um, talking about dinghy sailing, I've made a couple of notes here actually. Um, so yeah, we've also got the physical exercise, obviously, you know, you're not just sat on a boat, you are communicating with whoever you're sailing with, your hand-to-eye coordination, learning about different points of sail, where the wind is coming from, there's a huge amount of physics involved in sailing and I think it can really progress into a hobby, a career, anything really, as far as you want to take it. Um, I've now really got into racing, which I love, and I love the competitive side of that, um, but equally I love just to get out into the water, it's just a, a really, um, it's got a really kind of special draw, a pull on me, I mean if I go more than a month without sailing I start to get kind of withdrawal, <laughs> which I don't know if that's a, a bad thing or not. Um, but it is just a detox away from everything to do with, you know, cities, especially if you work in an environment where you, you can't really get out, it does give you that um, opportunity to, to do so. Um, so they would be, you know, some really good kind of starting points. Um, I know that in terms of, again, going back to mental health, a lot of the time, you know, with mental health, it might be that it's hard to talk about certain things. Um, and I know, you know, a lot of the time, if you're into, you know, integrating to a new sport, into new activity, it's a chance again to, to meet new friends, to make new connections and, uh, you know, really bond with other people that have a passion for what you do. And where that then really helps is it becomes something more than just going out onto the water, it becomes a case of, you know, you might be having deep conversations or you might be discussing events in the week, but it really is a chance to reflect and think about things in a calm and peaceful manner away from your everyday situation. Um, and it's also a chance to, you know, test yourself, and to push yourself and to build confidence. I think, I'm not sure how, how it is for other people, you know, I'm not some kind of licensed therapist or anything, but for me, the biggest thing that I've had to grow in the last four, four or five years is, is self-confidence and self-love. And I don't think it was until I found sailing that I really knew who I, I was. I, I was still kind of a little bit lost in terms of the direction I was going in, what I wanted, the goals, and even at work, you know, they ask you, you know, what, what drives you, what, what motivates you to, to want to do well, or maybe to earn more money salary, or have more time off, and for me, I quickly realised that this was what I was working for, and working towards, was so that I could enjoy those weekends, I was so excited that I had the sailing, and you know, I work in a job that's based on sales, so I was thinking, wow, you know, if I could save up, then maybe I could go and do this trip, or I could buy this new sail for for my boat, and, and things like that, so it really then started to build me up as a person, and as I progressed and was doing better in my sailing, it gave me a lot more self-confidence, um, you know, as a person, as someone that had more than just going to work and coming home and going to maybe the gym and having that cycle, it really gave me something outside the box, something different and a unique hobby that I could work on. And I do think that it's so important for people that you find a passion and until you explore, you'll never know. I mean, I'll, I speak to my friend um, Fiona quite a lot, I have to get her on this podcast at some point because she's totally inspirational. Possibly for Fiona the passion levels aren't quite there in terms of how obsessed I was but I was unusually obsessed. <laughs> but it is still something that she wants to do um, and we've been sailing many times together and it is just that great bonding experience. I've made so many good friends. I mean there's just a good example. You know I've met uh, Fiona who um, without talking about her life or anything but she's gone through a lot in her life um, and was able to talk to me and help me through some of the things I was going through at the time and four years later, five years later, we're still very close friends, um, you know, we've been on holiday together, so all of these things create a butterfly effect 
and for your mental health to be intact I think it's really important to get out your comfort zone and if you can get yourself out your comfort zone and do something different I mean I went to this course on my own nobody went with me I booked onto it myself you know it's just really going that extra mile to think you know what if I go to that pottery class or you know it could apply to anything I think with sailing it's outdoors but you know a hiking club or a kayaking club but something that really just pushes you and you might just find that when you go there that that is your thing that is your passion and you start to go and it becomes an obsession and you've got this newfound hobby that is just feeding life into you and so for me that's how my mental health has improved through sailing so physically mentally um and also the growth in terms of where it could take me um you know in the longer term so hopefully that was insightful um you know there's probably a lot more that could be discussed i know that the rya has a really great section on mental health and there's so many programs for young people um in fact for anyone i mean a lot of people know about the tall ships trust um, and there's other trips you can get involved in but I would just check out the website see um, you know what they have on there and, and contact them you know contact them find out where your nearest center is and if sailing something you want to give a go 100% recommend I know in the summer there'll be taster days and free days to go and try sailing so uh, that's another way you could just go and check it out and see uh, if it would be something that you would enjoy so that's the end of this podcast blogcast youtube <laughs> video so if you're listening or watching thank you again i'd love any suggestions for the next video because it's kind of hard <laughs> to think of the, the topics and i'm really new to this but if you're enjoying listening please do like and leave a comment it would really help and um thank you for again thank you for watching uh, or listening and goodbye have a good week <laughs>